Alrighty. I finished watching the first one's free to play, The Jimquisition by Jim Sterling. Sorry, Jim. I'm going to keep referring to you as he and calling you Jim because that's who you've always been to me. Furthermore, I noted, Jim, you said you wanted to actually jump back into Warframe. Well, I have a proposal amongst all the other things that I propose and say for DE. All the prime accesses that you guys have had, DE, that are at least one year old, and start by making them all available permanently for purchase. <clears throat> and reduce the prices, but leave all the bells and whistles in the package. Uh, the extra platinum, the sandanas, the weapons, the skins, leave it all in there. Just reduce the prices. Um, I had an idea of what you could make your minimum viable price. <coughs> you could take, uh, 25 or 30 percent of your operation costs for running the server and everything uh, Microsoft's uh, cut from the transactions that go through and you take that number and you divide it by the average number of players who make a purchase over the last uh, year to get your your average and plug it into this equation and see just how much to get 25 or 30 percent of your operational budget annually you would need to charge per average player in order for these uh, prices to support part of what you're doing because there's more than just the prime access now, if, if that number comes up to more than the, what is it, the $80 that it used to be last year or so ago, then fuck me, shit's gotten real bad. If not, if it comes out lower than that, <clears throat> then set that as your next year's minimum budget price for the prime accesses and in addition to that the ones that uh, have you, you you have come out with recently drop their price by five dollars every month until it hits that average that averaged out number without changing the the value that the person purchasing it gets also the price for platinum in general I would need to work out between all the different transactions uh, which 
uh, percentage of players on average buy platinum. And then set a nice lowered price and have an established value for the platinum in game as opposed to the trading market being the unholy abomination of fluctuating prices that it is. I was just thinking about the Riven and the Arcane market. Everything fluctuating wildly is not an economy. That's scarcity. That's FOMO. That's that's fear and greed. That's not an economy. That's not an established value. <clears throat> um, as far as platinum goes, for the highest amount of platinum that you buy, you shouldn't be charging more than twenty dollars. That's just blatant right there that you shouldn't be charging more than twenty dollars. No microtransaction for any in-game currency should ever go higher than twenty dollars. And skins they they should be bundled in value. Because you're getting hundreds or thousands of purchases, and you're only making one. You're not making a dress a thousand times over for a thousand customers. You're making one template, <coughs> and your system is automated to copy it ad infinitum for whoever wants to purchase it it's it's a lot of work to make a thing in a game but you shouldn't be charging per purchase as if it were that one singular thing you've made and it's you're gonna have to make it again you should be charging based on the idea that Okay, I've made this one thing. Now, I want to make like $50 off of it. So, 50 divided by, let's say, a thousand people make a purchase. That's less than pennies. Less, less than one cent per person. And you can afford to do that. You can afford it uh, emotionally. You can afford it psychologically. You can afford it creatively. Even you guys in the fandom making Tenogen, you, you can afford to be not greedy. God damn it, got something in my eye. You can afford it. Microsoft can afford not to be greedy. Uh, the shareholders, myself included, can afford not to be greedy. Yeah. Stick that in your psychological pipe and smoke it. I own a couple of shares in some companies. And I'm sitting here telling these companies. Don't be fucking greedy. I have no problem with you cutting the dividend I get. From owning a portion of your company by a couple of pennies. It's not going to matter that much in the overarching scheme of things. <clears throat> DE. All the stuff that's been out for more than a year, start decreasing the price of it. Till it hits that minimum viable amount that's needed to sustain your company including paying the bills, paying taxes, paying <clears throat> the other companies cuts that they need to take, such as Microsoft, paying your development and your team, 
so that you, you come away with a nice even we broke even you don't need infinite fucking growth you just need to make sure you take care of yourselves you, you don't need extra that much So, there it is. Work on the math. Come up with a proposal for everyone involved. Uh, don't go with your absolute bare bones minimum to where your company doesn't make any profit at all. Just make sure that the profit is not egregious as it not it alone singular as every company is doing because you can do better and yeah initially when you decrease the price a, a few extra people I estimate a few thousand might go and make a purchase but I estimate even more are gonna wait My hand's shaking. Don't know why. I estimate even more are going to wait until that price hits the minimum. And then you're going to see a larger spike of purchases made when it does hit that minimum. <clears throat> also, DE, when, when you said uh, pity system, just rebrand it. Call it what it is. It's dynamic loot distribution. Don't use words that insult the people who support you by making purchases in your game. Don't push people away like Sour Bitches Inc. does with their DEI propaganda and their ESG bullshit. Don't push people away. There's a bunch of haters. Just fucking ignore them. I'm standing here giving constructive feedback and genuine critique constructively, not derogatively. So interpret that however you want. 